Hello everyone, this is Manda Adhika and in this tutorial I am going to show you how you print pattern using C++. So for instance, if I need to print something in form of X, a human being can easily understand what it is and he can write anything in the form of X, any alphabet or any number. But how does a computer understand it? That is what the half of the video deals with. After that we are going to see how a computer prints it, what all statements, what all conditions we should take into consideration for the computer to understand that we want to print something in the form of X. So this is how it stores, a computer stores what we need. So this is how it goes. You can see X when you look at it from a distance. So this is X but it's, it is stored in the form of 2D array. So each block has a address, a location, like a person identifies you with a name. Each value or each variable present in a block can be taken out with the address location given to it. So now you can see 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 3, all this kind of stuff and kind of uh, different. But let me explain that very clearly. As in a graph, we have x and y axis. In the blocks which I have previously shown, they have rows and columns. First, let me talk about the rows. The rows are something where you start considering things in a horizontal manner or a horizontal fashion. The second term which I have specified are the columns. They are something which are considered in vertical fashion. This is all about columns. Now let me go back to the same slide where uh, I can explain both of this uh, row and column in detail with address location specified. Now you know what a row is and what a column is. For now just understand that uh, what is given here before the comma in the row specifies the number of rows like the uh, third 3 comma 1 means the third row and the first column that is what it means according to a human being but uh, somewhere a doubt arises why is it starting from 0 if a human being says that he wants 5 lines I say 1 2 3 4 5 these are the number of lines but when you tell it to the computer it takes it from 0 and stops with 4 so 0 1 2 3 4 it again makes 5 lines the difference is we start from 1 for our convenience and computer starts from 3 sorry 0 and now here 0 comma 0 it means the 0th row 0th column according to the computer but for us it is the first row first column this is the way I have filled all these blocks and all these address locations as they have been given for the numbers which are present over here now I want to print the numbers in these particular address locations that is why I take these coordinates now 1 0 comma 0 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 all of these things I take separately and I try to form a condition with these numbers now something like this so here I have made a list of two columns now in the first column I have my columns this uh, the number the numbers which are written in red are my rows and the numbers which are written in black are my columns the same with this case now what actually happened is I made I saw the similarity I made them like I classified them which are similar as one part which are kind of uh, unique from these I made them as another thing so what is the similarity in this first block? I have seen that 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. I have seen that i and j are equal. I mean the row and column are equal. So I say i equal to equal to j. So this is the condition that can be applicable for all of these. And for these things, I can say if I want i, I take the user's input n minus the column minus 1. That again gives me i. If I subtract the user's input, and the column minus 1 I get the row so these two conditions either one of these any one of them should get satisfied so that I can print any one of them is fine because I need to print in both of them so I take the first condition and the double uh, bar here represents an or any one of them is fine then it will enter the fourth if loop sorry so I am going to take an if loop and I am going to initialize condition 1 and condition 2 over here now as we understood what is going to happen in the program, we first need to initialize some variables before starting your coding or starting programming. So the variables which I use are i and j for the row and column, where i represents uh, the row and j represents the column. They are loop counter variables. And the second is a of something like a of i. It actually represents an array where you store the input and n is the input from the user. These three are the variables which we will be declaring. So to make it more clear, we will take an example and the question is that I have to print something like this and the number given is 1110111. This is what I need to print in the form of x. 
and at the end of the question i find something like there's a condition a condition given that the total number of digits must be odd the number of the input which you give should be odd that is the first condition keep it in your mind and lay as we go down we find something like do and don'ts and there are two more conditions over here telling that the minimum number of digits should be 3 and the maximum number of digits should be 90 or less than 90 so that means our range varies from 3 to 90 and we should not use even numbers in this if you use even numbers in this or you use some value less than 3 or greater than 90 your output is going to be invalid that means you, it cannot show it cannot execute the program that is what it says and you have to keep these three things into consideration in your mind so before you write a program so firstly what i'm going to do i am going to write the main structure of my program that is i'm going to include io stream i'm so sorry i'm your stream and i'm using namespace std this is the main structure you are using an int name and the open and close braces with a written value i written a value because i've said int so once you're done with this, remember the three conditions which you have given, which they have given. So the conditions are that it should be odd number, the first condition. The second condition is that it should be a minimum of three, the input, and the maximum of 19. So this is your current three statements which you have in your mind. So for that, I am going to write a condition. This is how it is going to look like. I say the value n, which is the uh, which is taking the input from the user, should be greater than or equal to three. And this specifies and both the conditions on the either side of the and should be true. Then and only it will enter the loop. And if not, it prints the else statement. And the second condition I say is n is less than or equal to 19. The third statement I say is n mod 2 is not equal to 0. What does this mean? I said it should not be an odd number. That means it should not be divisible by 2. In other terms, I can say when it is divisible by 2, its remainder should not be 0. That is what I did here. n mod 2 gives me the remainder of n divided by 2. And that should not be equal to 0. So I have written all the three conditions in a single line. If this is so, if this statement entirely is agreed, if this the input is valid, then it will enter the loop and execute what is inside that. If not, if uh, any one of the condition is not executed or if one of the condition is false and the input cannot be taken, I will say else I want to print that it is not a correct statement. So I will say that it is an invalid input. This is how I say. So if you say it is correct, then it goes inside the loop and if it is not, it is an invalid input. So let me show what happens inside the loop once you give a correct print. Before giving a variable, that means you have to ask the user to enter something. So you are going to display something like, you are asking the user to enter something. You are asking the user. So you have to provide a statement for the user. So in Cout, I am going to print on the screen like, so this is how it looks like. I am asking, enter an odd number. I am telling the user. The user never, never read the question. So I am making it more clear for the user. Enter an odd number that is greater than 3. Odd number, my last condition, greater than 3, my first condition, smaller than 19, the condition in between. So, 3 of them are given. So, once the user reads it, the user enters a value and that should be stored in something. So, I give it n. So, what is this n? Before that, you must remember that you have to initialize the value. So, it is an integer. I am initializing n, which is uh, taking input from the user. And I am also initializing an array to store variables and maybe I will give it a limit of 100. And after that, I have to give the loop variables i and j, row and column as you remember, i and j. So this is all what I have to give in the beginning. And if user understands that he has to give something, he types a uh, value and that gets stored in n. And after that gets stored in n, the computer checks if that is true or not. If it is true, it enters the loop. If not, it says invalid number. Now let us concentrate in what is happening inside the if loop if the conditions are satisfied. Now after telling uh, the if statement, I am going to use two for loops. One for making the computer know that uh, zero is in between the ones on the top and ones at the bottom. And the second thing, I am going to specify how the row works and the column works. To make it more clear, let me say this is the way in which you have to print the numbers uh, in a pattern. So I am telling if I want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
be the second. So, bottom three are ones, top three rows are ones. And, but in between them, I need a zero. This is what I actually want to tell the computer. So, how many do I have? Seven. Seven by two. It is three point something. Let me consider four. So, here I need a zero. So, the same in the case of uh, the other loop variable which I have said. If I equal to equal to n by 2, then I am going to initialize the array value to 0. So, the value will be fixed. And if not, then I am going to print 1 in the remaining places. Only in the place of n by 2, I am going to print the value 0. And then and in the remaining places, I am going to print 1. So, for that case, for telling uh, zeros and 1s, where what I have to print, I have used, used this for loop. And the second for loop is a nested for loop. The first thing, the first variable declared is i, which represents a row. The um, other thing which is mentioned here is a j, which is a column. So once this condition is specified, it enters the loop inside. And even if this is specified, it enters the loop inside. As I've shown the two conditions, which I said i equal to equal to j, and i equal to equal to n minus 1 minus j. These are the two conditions which had to be satisfied for printing in the x shape, which I've shown in the slides. Yeah, this is where I taught you how it goes and the two conditions I have taken, I have created an if loop, the same I am writing in my program. Here in my program, I say the same condition, if it is so, then print a of i. And in this condition, it is going to print the value. If not, I am going to say print space. So, when it is going to print 0, now listen, any one of this condition can be true, so as I've used or in between them. And at a point 2 comma 2, where I've show previously shown, we have the value 0. In the point 2 comma 2, what actually happens is this statement, this if statement gets satisfied and here the value of ai will be 0. So here the C out value will be 0 and you'll get 0 during that particular condition when the value is 2 comma 2 else it prints space. That is how the entire thing will get executed. And after finishing, this is for column, right? Once you're done with the column, you're out of this column loop. I mean like one column is completely done. Then you come to the next column, that means it should be printed in the next line. So after this for loop, I'm using an end statement. And after that, never forget to close uh, the for loop which has been initialized. So for closing brace is must when you open a uh, brace for a for loop or any loop when you are using nested statements or anything like that. You should make it particular for the computer. Otherwise, it shows error after that you can correct. But it is fine maintaining uh, closing and opening braces when you start it. After that, you just, you know what happens after that. I am going to say else it is an invalid statement. Now let us see how this works. Now when I uh, run this program, there is something like I will click build and run. And here we used a C out statement. So the first thing that is getting displayed is enter an odd number, okay, that is greater than 3 and smaller than 19. Okay, greater than 3, I am going to enter uh, 5, which is an odd number and is smaller than 19, so that is satisfied. And here you have a pattern in the form of x. Now, okay, let me say, for instance, a number which is greater than 19, which uh, does not satisfy the condition. I will say 20. So it is showing that it is an invalid input. So let me say I am taking some number less than 3. So I will say 1. Again it says invalid input. This is how it works. Thanks for watching. Hope you understand. Bye bye.